Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for April 29th, 2024. Today I have a very alarming report to you, and one which requires action on your part. We hear all the time from politicians that we're a democracy, we're the defender of the rules-based order against tyrannies, against autocracies and authoritarians. Well, folks, this is not true. It's bunk. The idea that we have a constitutional protection of free speech is being thrown out the window increasingly by members of both parties. And we see this especially in reaction to the demonstrations underway on college campuses throughout the country against the Israeli genocidal policy uh, toward the Palestinian population. We have the end of free speech in sight, the move toward censorship to uh, a police state with Democrats and Republicans, including MAGA Republicans and so-called liberal Democrats like the squad, moving to take your rights away. Now, an overwhelming majority in the Congress in both parties voted over $15 billion to Israel to continue their war against the Palestinian population, an ethnic cleansing to drive the Palestinians out of Gaza. As you know, there have been over 34,000 killed so far uh, in Gaza, many of whom are children who are not combatants, who had nothing to do with the October 7th attack on Israel. Many hundreds of thousands more face starvation because of the Israeli blockade. And, and remember, the Israelis announced at the beginning of their response to the October 7th attack that they would cut off food, water, fuel, and medicine. We see constant attacks that include the cold-blooded murder of the members of the World Central Kitchen who were trying to bring food to starving Palestinians. We've seen the uncovering of mass graves at hospitals, the Nasser Hospital, the Al-Shifa Hospital in Khan Yunus, the dead bodies with their hands, uh, their wrists handcuffed, uh, lying in mass graves. And there's the, the Israelis refuse to allow an investigation of this. Now, we also have Israeli government officials openly talking about the Palestinians as animals, as collectively guilty, uh, lying that they're being discriminating in who they're attacking when they're dropping 2,000 pound bombs on residential neighborhoods. How is that targeting the uh, terrorists? And we've seen worldwide reaction to it. It's not just US campuses. But we've seen the South African government bring a case to the International Court of Justice, which found plausible cause for accusing Israel of genocide. We've seen votes repeatedly in the UN General Assembly and now in the UN Security Council calling for a ceasefire, demanding that Israel stop the killing. But the Israelis and the supporters of Israel in the US government and Joe Biden's administration say that these resolutions are non-binding and that the killing can continue and the U.S. will continue to provide weapons and support to Israel, even as we're complaining about the civilian casualties. So where is this rules-based order? Where is the democracy that we hear so much about? It's now being exposed as a fraud, as the U.S. is a violator repeatedly of international law. Now, the good news is a growing number of Americans are speaking out. We see it in terms of uh, resolutions going before city councils. We see it in terms of groups such as the Veteran Intelligence Professionals for Sanity, uh, Code Pink, uh, candidates such as, as my friend Jose Vega, challenging political leaders in the United States on this. And now we're seeing the uprising on college campuses spreading throughout the country. Uh, as many as 75 or 80 campuses where students are demonstrating. And what, what are they saying? They're saying no to genocide. 
They're saying there must be humanitarian aid for the Palestinians. And they're calling for an independent Palestinian state that has been part of international law since 1967 with the passage of UN Resolution 242. Now, the students who are camping out on campuses demanding this are supporting these demands. They're being denounced as anti-Semitic. In other words, if you challenge Israel's policy of indiscriminate slaughter of children, supposedly as a counter to Hamas, if you oppose that, if you insist that there be some commitment to international law, you're considered not just an opponent of the Israeli government, but an anti-Semite, with Netanyahu going as far as saying that the people who are demonstrating against Israel are reminiscent of the Nazis. Now, this is an anti-constitutional reaction. You're not allowed to express your opinions. The uh, Let me just give you some examples of this. I mean, Biden himself is saying that there's a growth of anti-Semitism. No, there's a growth of uh, people speaking out against genocide. Uh, Nancy Pelosi said that the demonstrators are paid by Putin. You know, we, we know Pelosi is over the hill, but why are Democrats not denouncing her for this? Then we have a bipartisan bill that was introduced by Richie Torres, a Democrat from New York, and Mike Lawler, a Republican from New York. They're calling it the Columbia Act, re in reference to Columbia University, where the largest demonstrations have been taking place. And it would mandate, quote, anti-Semitism monitors, unquote, on campus. And if a university refuses to set this up, they'll lose federal funds. So they're essentially demanding a Gestapo be set up to silence criticism, or else the funds will be cut to the university. This is Gestapo policy in support of genocide. Now, just a couple of the more extreme examples from the Congress. You have Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas, who refers to these demonstrations as nascent pogroms. Now, pogroms were the uh, attacks on Jewish neighborhoods and families and synagogues in Eastern Europe and, Ru and uh, Russia. Pogroms were anti-Semitism. That's not what the students on campuses are calling for. They're calling for justice for Palestine. Uh, Senator Ted Cruz, with absolutely nothing to back this up, says that what we're seeing is hatred versus Jewish students, threats against their lives, and he calls for arrest and deportation. Let me remind people that Senator Ted Cruz was born in Canada, and he seems to hold a lot more in common with Prime Minister Trudeau of Canada, who used a crackdown by the government to silence opposition, than to have any support for the US Constitution. Maybe Cruz should go to Canada and hang out with his buddy Trudeau, and his, because of his willingness to shut down free speech. And then you have even more lunacy. The Nebraska Republican Senator Pete Ricketts blames TikTok and the Chinese Communist Party for the demonstrations, saying that they're fomenting rebellion against the United States. Now, remember, these are protests against genocide, not against Jews. They're protests against a government, the government of Israel, which is at this point accelerating the drive that's been there for the last 75 years to remove Palestinians from Palestine. And that is something which goes against international law. So where is the uh, responsibility to uphold international law? Certainly not among the U.S. Congress. Now, let me remind you that 30 years ago, on April 27, 1994, were the first free elections in South Africa that signaled the end of the apartheid regime. Now, 18 years before those elections, there was the Soweto uprising, 
where young people refused to go to school. They demonstrated against apartheid. Uh, many of them paid for it with their lives or went to long prison. Uh, Nelson Mandela spent many years in prison for his fight against injustice. So it's not surprising that South Africa is at the forefront today with their motion brought before the International Court of Justice to enforce the 1947 Genocide Act or genocide uh, uh, mandate that nations move against any ex example of genocide today. So instead of lying about the students, what they're doing, what their intentions are, instead of calling for suppressing them, uh, deporting them, jailing them, we should recognize that they have a constitution, constitutional right to demonstrate. In fact, what should stop is the mouthing off of an SS thought police in the US Congress and among elected leaders who would try to silence opposition by passing laws to make the First Amendment unconstitutional. So you may think, if you get your news from the mainstream media, you may think that these politicians are trying to protect America from dangerous anti-Semites. But remember, these are the same congressmen, including Republicans, including MAGA supporters, who voted to reauthorize the FISA Act with its warrantless wiretapping, which means they support spying on you. So that's what we're dealing with. And I would encourage you to watch the program that I'm going to be linking today, the Manhattan Project discussion from last Saturday, where Dennis Speed, uh, Ray McGovern, Jose Vega, who's running against Richie Torres, and I took up this question of the defense of the constitutional right to free speech against those who would throw it out in order to defend war. So thanks for joining me. I'll see you again tomorrow.